The world is finally moving towards decarbonization, and a big part of that is through batteries, for electric vehicles and for solar and wind energy storage. Nickel is key to high energy storage in lithium-ion batteries. As the production of electric vehicles continues to increase and battery makers increase the amount of nickel in high-performance batteries, the world is going to need much more high-purity nickel. Roskill notes that by 2030, battery demand from the automotive sector will increase by a factor of 13. The International Energy Agency forecasts that by 2040, 36 times as much nickel will be needed for batteries as was used in 2020. This would require over 100 new large nickel mines. There are two main types of nickel deposits. Sulfide ores, which occur mostly in temperate regions like Russia, Canada, Australia, and South Africa, and laterite ores, which occur mostly in the tropics. Today, most nickel is mined in Indonesia, the Philippines, Russia, and New Caledonia. Nickel sulfide ores are hard rock ores, which are typically mined from underground deposits. These have a very low surface footprint, but can be quite costly to mine. Some lower grade nickel sulfide ores are mined from open pits that range from 50 to 300 meters deep. Laterite ores are mined from surface strip mines. The thin, soil-like deposits can cover substantial areas of land, often underneath tropical rainforests. Nickel is processed in three ways. Sulfide ores are mined, concentrated to an intermediate form, then smelted and refined to make high-purity nickel. Laterite ores are mainly dried, then smelted with electricity to make an impure nickel-iron alloy. A smaller amount of laterite ore is treated by high-pressure acid leaching, where hot sulfuric acid dissolves the ore for recovery of the nickel into an intermediate form for later refining to high-purity products. Most nickel supply in the last 20 years has come from processing nickel laterites, which, unfortunately, generally have a much higher environmental footprint than processing sulfide ores. Factors like where the nickel is mined, what type of nickel ore it is, and how it is processed all add to the total impact and should be considered. Social concerns often arise around the consent of the local people to the mining activity and its impact on them, the labor conditions, and the potential for increased corruption. Not all jurisdictions offer the same level of consideration for communities and workers. Perhaps the most important environmental impact to consider is the greenhouse gas footprint, especially given nickel's role in decarbonization and electric vehicles. Sulfide operations offer the lowest greenhouse gas footprint, especially when connected to clean grid power. Laterite high-pressure acid leach facilities have a mid-range carbon footprint, depending on the power source and whether they incorporate a sulfur-burning acid plant. Laterite ferro-nickel and nickel pig iron smelters are at the high end of the carbon spectrum, especially when coal-fired electricity is the power source. Another important factor is the ecosystem impact. Tropical forests, which host much of the laterite ore that has formed the most recent nickel developments, have the highest biodiversity and localization of species, so removing large swaths of forest for laterite strip mines can be very destructive. Some nickel laterites are in dry locations, so have a lower impact, while sulfide mines in the desert, taiga, or arctic should have the lowest ecosystem impact. Today, people are much more conscious about where products come from and how they are made and sourced. When we consider the social and environmental aspects of mining and processing, we see that some nickel can be considered clean and some is much dirtier. The most responsible nickel production should be from sulfide ores with clean grid electricity in jurisdictions with high standards for permitting, labor conditions, and low corruption. Projects in Canada, Western Europe, and Australia are likely to meet these conditions. The Turnagain Sulfide Nickel Project in northern British Columbia meets all of these requirements. With a deep open pit mine located in the Taiga, the ecosystem impacts are expected to be relatively minor. Canada has very low corruption and has a high-quality permitting system that considers both social and environmental issues. British Columbia has a tailings management standard that is amongst the best in the world and has incorporated the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People into its legislative practices, further ensuring appropriate consultation of local Indigenous groups. The sulfide ore will be processed to a high-quality concentrate suitable for smelting or direct treatment to the intermediates most in demand for today's high-purity battery products. 
with tailings that will sequester carbon, the Turnigan project could be a carbon-neutral nickel mine, supplying the lowest carbon nickel to the global battery industry.